everyone, I'm Russ White, and I just want to talk for a minute about the reasons you might want to move from a traditional hierarchical network in your data center to a real full-on fabric. So I'm going to call this, this little short lesson Justifying Fabrics. So let's begin with this kind of simple network. Uh, this is what you might say is a three-layer hierarchy, but if this network were switched, which is quite often the case with these type of networks, this really isn't a three-layer hierarchical network. Normally in a three-layer hierarchical network, you would have an access, you would have distribution, and you would have core. But if you are looking at this as a switch network, there's simply no no breakage in the failure domains at layer three. This entire network is a single failure domain from a control plane perspective because the whole thing is probably running spanning tree or the moral equivalent. Now you may be able to use um, VLANs 802.1Q or something like that to break up the the broadcast failure domains on this network, but the entire network would be a single control plane failure domain. This is something that's kind of important to remember when you look at failure domains and networks is that you need to differentiate between the failure domain at the transport layer and the failure domain at the control plane. So these are two separate failure domains that you need to break apart in your mind and understand the difference. Now, some links in a spanning tree network like this must be blocked. For instance, if I look at this path from B to C, and then C to E, and then E over to D, and then D back to B, this is a loop. So this could form a permanent loop where traffic is simply being forwarded around this loop constantly. So you need to break this somehow. Spanning tree is going to break that by blocking some of these ports in one way or another. Um, say this B to C port and then this E to D port or something like that. Well, this means that some amount of your data of your data path, some amount of your capacity in the network is sitting there unused because the spanning tree protocol is blocking it. Now, you can switch to a routed version of this network. Now, I'll just say we're not doing much different in the diagram. We're just going to call these routers instead of switches. So that's going to make a difference because what's going to happen here is, is that I can actually now build a truly hierarchical network design. I can build an access, a distribution, and a core. And the way I would do that is by aggregating here at DNC and at this pair of routers here at the top. This allows me to use equal cost multipath to load share across these pairs of links, which means that I don't have any links blocked. Now, each link now is a layer two ethernet failure domain or broadcast domain. So my failure domain at layer two has been broken down into these individual links. Now my entire network still could be a large failure domain from a routing protocol perspective, but that's going to depend on whether or not I'm doing aggregation here at the distribution layer. Now another way you can lay this out is as a two-layer hierarchy and make these like your aggregation sections or modules and this being your core, or you could even make this your core and make these your aggregation modules. So there are various ways you could break this up if this is a routed network. Now let's look for a second down here at this server, which is G. Now let's say I have some application in, on this server, and this application is supporting, I have host out here, users, and they're coming in through the network and reaching out to this and building a TCP or a quick session, and they're getting served a web page or something like that, some service that they're getting. Now on this server, this application probably consists of many different parts. For instance, it might have a database or DB. It probably has some sort of business logic involved with it, uh, which I'll call BL here. And then I'm going to have some sort of rendering engine, or RE as I'll call it. So these three components all live on this same box. So that means that in order for me to increase the number of users who can come in and access this server or this service, what I need to do is I need to scale this server up. So we're going to call this the scale up design pattern. Because what I want to do or what I need to do is I need to add more stuff into the server, more processor, more storage, more network capability, whatever it is. And I'm going to keep adding stuff to that server until I run out of space. 
Now at some point I can also gang the server, I can build a second server next to it, and then I can somehow connect these two servers using like server aggregation or some sort of multiprocessor type thing or something like that. So I'm basically building a little mini network between the two servers and treating them as a single server. What this typically means is just to build out larger devices. Now what happens as I build this server out, as I scale it up, as I said before, is I'm going to have to scale up the amount of traffic coming in on these interfaces as well, or these links. Well, that means I need to be able to drive more traffic across these two routers, and then across these two routers, and then across these two routers, and across these links. Well, how can I make these devices support more traffic? The easiest way for me to do this is to start out by buying chassis boxes and then filling some of the slots in those chassis boxes with line cards. I leave the rest of that chassis box open and empty for me to fill in later. I can also build like stackable units that then have like a mini fabric or network connecting between them and then I just stack them all and aggregate them and treat them as if they are one big box. Now what we need to think about though when we're looking at this is in the scale up pattern I'm buying the network in chunks, large chunks, chassis sized chunks for the most part. So this means my network is going to scale like this. It's going to scale in chunks. So as I buy pieces of the network, I'm going to increase the capabilities the network has. However, what happens on my business side is my business grows in fits and starts. My business grows at a little different kind of a pace here. So what's going to happen is during the times when I have more network capacity than I need for my business, I'm going to overshoot my capacity. This means I have money invested in the network that I really can't use for anything. On the other side, I'm going to have times when my business is actually constrained by the network itself. This is an, an undershoot, and in this case, I'm losing money because I cannot grow the business as quickly as I would otherwise if I had enough network to support it. So this kind of mismatch causes a strain on the business in both directions both in the undershoot and in the overshoot areas. This can cause lost opportunity and overpaying for what you really need. Now what happens if I scale the application up in a different way? If I say what I'm going to do is, is I had these three components in here. I had a database, I had business logic, and then I had a, a some sort of rendering engine like a, a hacked Apache server or something like that. What if I put my database exclusively on this G server? and I put my business logic exclusively on this H server, and I put my rendering engine exclusively on this K server. Now I can scale each of these servers independently, which allows me to actually build the application larger. So this is what I'm going to call a scale out design pattern. So now I'm going to scale out by adding more servers. In fact, when I run out of space on this server that's running the database, I can actually put a second server next to it. I could shard the database if I want to. I can do different things to make it where I can scale this out rather than scaling it up. Again, if I run out of processor on this rendering engine box over here at K, then what I can do is I can add a second one and then I can put a load balancer in here and spread the traffic between these two copies of the server. So this allows me to scale the network or scale the application without needing to buy an ever larger box. Now what this does however to the network is interesting. Now I have a user come in and they're going to attach to a, a TCP or quick session or whatever here at K. Now this is going to cause them to build a render. It's going to add the, the server is going to try to build a web page. What it does to do that is it's got to reach back through the network and talk to the business logic server over here at H to figure out how to build that web page. What components does it need? The business logic server in turn is going to need to reach back to the database server as is the rendering engine. So now for every byte of traffic that I have coming into K, I have 3 to 10 to 100 bytes of traffic being carried across the network. So typically what I see in the real world is 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 uh, ratios between these two different things. Now, if I think about it, the traffic running this direction in the network is running from the server, which is south, to the external network, which is north. 
the traffic running between these devices is running east-west. So we'll call this east and this west, and I'll call the traffic running between the servers east-west. So what I've actually done is, is I've replaced or gotten rid of my north-south traffic. I've just created 110 to 100 times as much east-west traffic as I had north-south traffic. So you can see this is going to put a major, major strain on the network and the network infrastructure. I'm going to have to scale these routers up tremendously to carry that traffic east-west between these devices. So if I'm going to look at the challenges with building a network using a traditional mechanism or traditional hierarchical design, what I can say is I have problems with matching the network and server scaling more closely to the business conditions. So I need to figure out how to make my network not have overshoot and undershoot as much as possible because that's costing me money and it's costing me agility in the way I build the network and the way the business runs. The second thing I need to figure out is I need to be able to support a much higher rate of east-west traffic due to service disaggregation. So what I have now is, is for every byte of traffic coming in off the northbound interface, I have 10 to 100 times that much traffic being carried across the network itself. Third is, I need to resolve my scaling issues in the network core. So I have that core, and as I'm trying to get to that core, what I need to do is continue increasing the size of these two routers and these distribution layer routers. Now, at some point, I'm going to run out of slots in that big chassis and have to buy a bigger chassis, or I'm going to have to gang them up and use something like MLAG, proprietary protocols, to make these things look like one device. So this becomes very problematic. I run out of potential scale at these central devices as I run out of more bandwidth. So that is an issue I need to solve, is this scaling up issue in dealing with the network. So here's the question we need to ask ourselves. We scale out servers and services. Why don't we just scale out the network itself? Why can't we find a way to scale the network out the same way we are scaling out the services that are running or attached to the network on those servers? So that's what we'll continue with in the next little short section talking about data center fabrics. Thank you.